Hi everyone, if you're new here, I'm Alan with Earthglow and I'm about to film what may be my most favorite video ever. We are going to be doing the top five of my favorite spa scents of all time. This category is so popular in the candle making world. Um, I think that this may be my most exciting fragrance favorites video yet. But anyways, if this is something that you're interested in, then consider subscribing. I am always posting candle business related content and fragrance videos. I don't think I will ever get tired of making. I love talking about fragrances. I love being obsessed with fragrances, collecting fragrances, thinking about fragrances in my sleep, never ending fragrances, more and more fragrances. I better just end this intro now or it is probably going to go on. So as I always say with these videos, I have to put the disclaimer out that there is a chance that a fragrance that I really like, you may not like, and a fragrance that you really like, I might have on my fails list. That's just how it is with fragrances. They're highly subjective, and I think most of you already understand that. And I also want to say that I'm only speaking from my own experience. I love watching other candle making channels myself as well. Generally, I'm speaking from my own experience and I'm only speaking about companies that I have tried fragrance oils from. I think it would be impossible to try fragrance oils from every single company. Um, and also there's a lot of shipping. The companies that I've tried oils from are obviously the only ones that I can talk about in these videos. So that includes oils from Flaming Candle, 1617, Candle Science, Stone Candles, Bulk Apothecary, Brambleberry, Candles and Supplies, and did I say Stone Candles? Yeah, so that's about it. Um, those are the companies that I have tried oils from. So we're gonna go from number five to number one and if any of you didn't watch the other video on my honorable mentions first, definitely check that video out. It talks about all of my honorable mentions and those are very good fragrances, all of them. Uh, mostly my honorable mentions are just because I haven't tried that fragrance very much or I've only had it in my line for like six months to eight months or it hasn't sold as well for me or maybe some minor issues with wooden wicks. Basically minor imperfections that I always talk about. Generally the honorable mentions are very 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 highly ranked fragrances for me. But anyways let's get right into these. So in our number five spot for my favorite spa fragrance of all time we have Green Tea and Lemongrass by Candle Science. It's a very bright, very happy fragrance that is a mixture of citruses and I would say more exotic green notes, specifically the green tea and the lemongrass, but it's more than lemongrass. It's kind of like lemon with the lemongrass with other citruses and maybe a little bit of jasmine ozone and some let's just say muskiness um, very light kind of sheer woods type muskiness in the base of this one and this one is in my spot collection as my yoga studio candle and this one is a fairly newer one to me i think it's been in my collection for about a year but this one is one of my most popular spa collection fragrances and I call it yoga studio and yeah this one is definitely special and a unique fragrance however I think that the honorable mention that I have from stone candles in my other video which I will link above just in case you haven't watched that one um, I would recommend watching that one first and then coming back to this one but I would say that that one may end up taking the place of this one if I continue liking it as much as I have from my first candles that I've made. In my number four spot, we have Sea Salt and Orchid. And I know this is a classic and many of you probably wonder why I'm not ranking this one higher. The reason is because this is a fairly new fragrance oil to me. I've only had this fragrance in my collection for, I would say like four to five months. 
and yeah, so I was late on the game with this one. It's never really appealed to me particularly, even though so many people liked it. I was just kind of like, well, I'm not really sure what the hype is. The notes don't sound that intriguing in particular to me. But yeah, this one is kind of, I kind of understand the hype since I have had this one in my collection. Um, I did put it in my summer loving collection this year, but I think I'm gonna be moving it to my spa collection and keeping it as a year round fragrance. Um, because I cannot imagine only selling this fragrance three months out of the year. Sea Salt and Orchid, I would describe it as a blend of marine notes with fruity notes, with floral notes, like the orchid, like the freesia. There is an ozonic, really marine component to this fragrance. And yeah, the sea salt picture with the Himalayan sea salt, I think is so perfect for this one. Um, you can get that image as well on Adobe stock. And I think um, Dreamstock um, has it as well. And yeah, this fragrance is so, so quintessentially spa. Like if you wanna have a fragrance in your spa collection that keeps people continually coming back over and over again, I think that the Sea Salt and Orchid by Candle Science is hands down it. But I do only rank this one as my number four um, because it is a fairly new fragrance to me. And um, I think that it probably will end up ranking higher as I work with this fragrance oil uh, more. In our number three spot, we have a fragrance that is so popular for me and is such a special oil. When I first smelled this fragrance, I about died because I'd never smelled anything remotely like it and I could tell out of the bottle that it more than likely was going to have a killer throw in natural wax and I was not mistaken at all. This fragrance is Eternel by 1617. This is a blend of Magnolia, Frangipani, um, Jasmine, Tobacco, and Vanilla. And this fragrance is I blend this with Persephone. It's a 50-50 blend, and this one is in my Wanderlust collection as my Rio de Janeiro candle. And this is one of my most popular Wanderlust scents next to Barcelona. I think this is my most popular fragrance in that collection and you certainly wouldn't have to blend it. I love Persephone, but I do think that the Eternel definitely takes the cake for me if you are looking between those two from 1617. You will have customers continually wanting to come back for this fragrance and you don't have to blend it with anything. And it's such a phenomenal thrower and it performs so well with wooden wicks. Um, I use this one in my beeswax soy and cocoa cream wax blend and yeah, this fragrance is so, so beautiful. It is like an eternal dance of life. It's so green, but luxury and spa-like. It's aromatherapy, 110%. And this fragrance can fill a large room with um, an eight ounce candle. And you will like smell this one all throughout um, I would say a floor of your house after a few hours. It's really, really, really powerful. And I'm so excited to put the spotlight on this fragrance. In my number two spot for my favorite spa fragrance of all time that I've ever smelled, that I've ever worked with. By the way, I get so excited when I talk about this oil. This is like the hidden gem of the fragrance world. If I had to pick one fragrance that is like the hidden gem, this is it. Like this is it. Ladies and gentlemen and humans of the world, this is it. This is the hidden gem of the fragrance world that is so underrated, but you need to just Select it as your free sample the next time you order from Candle Science if you're a Candle Science customer um, like I am. This is Fig Tree by Candle Science and I don't even know where to begin with this fragrance oil. I don't even know where to begin with this fragrance oil. This fragrance is woody, it's floral, it's so high end, it's so sophisticatedly elegant. 
don't even know if that's a word, but it just was. It's out of this world. It's so Mediterranean. Um, I blend this one with sandalwood and I will put my blend as always in the description box. But yeah, this is my Barcelona candle in my Wanderlust collection and it is hands down my best seller in that collection. I can barely keep the scent in stock. And yeah, this fragrance is such a hidden gem. It has green leaves, it has bamboo, it has this hidden sort of wonderful, sophisticated quality. And it's such a great thrower. This one with an eight ounce candle um, can fill, I would say a medium to large sized room within probably half an hour. And yeah, it's a really good thrower, I would say, and that is also blended with the sandalwood, so you could probably get it even stronger if you just did it by itself. But yeah, this fig tree is a must try. It might not be for you, it might not be for you, but it is a must try. Like you need to at least know about it and smell it and try it. I think by now I probably got my point across on this fragrance. In my number one spot for the best spa fragrance of all time. There is no question about this. Um, this is hands down my best seller of any candle that I make in my candle line. Um, this is my number one best seller from any collection. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna show it to you. You've waited long enough. This is White Sage and Lavender by Candle Science. Oh my God, I just whacked myself in the face with a cap. Um, but yeah, I keep two five pound jugs of this fragrance on stock at all times because this is my most popular candle. It's very um, herbaceous. It has a lot of camphor notes to it. It has a lot of lavender, but it has a lot of white sage. So I think that that's why this one does get a lot of complaints. I wouldn't say a lot, but it gets a fair amount of complaints from Candle Science reviewers. Um, and I think that they're thinking that this should have more lavender and less white sage. But if you like white sage, you're going to love this fragrance. This is Salva Apiana, 110%, like the herb. It's so, so, so beautiful. And the lavender is a French lavender. Like, it's almost like you took a little bit of that Mayfield from 1617 and seamlessly integrated it into this fragrance somehow. And maybe also added a little bit of rosemary and a little bit of chamomile. I don't know if those notes are actually in this fragrance, but that's just sort of what I imagine and pick up on when I'm burning this candle. Um, I think that this would also be a good one in a spring and summer collection. I think that this would be a must have in an aromatherapy collection because white sage is also such a purifying herb. The metaphysical community loves to use white sage to clear negative energy. And burning white sage is sort of um, a little bit frowned upon depending on where you're sourcing it from oftentimes because of the cultural appropriation. There's mixed views on that. I don't want to get into that topic um, at all on this video. But the point is, is that having this in the form of a candle is such a beautiful way to enjoy white sage and to clear negative energy from your environment, from your client's environment. Um, so yeah, I sell this one as my raise that shit candle in my artisan collection and it will forever probably remain my best selling candle. And for the fails, so we do have two scents that I would consider fails um, at being a spa scent. Um, they're kind of spa wannabes, but yeah, they really do fall short of the line for me personally. Um, and the first one of those is Lavender Tea and Tonic by Candle Science. When this fragrance was released, uh, maybe a year or two ago, I had high hopes for it, but yeah, the tonic notes, um, there's something about it that just doesn't quite rub right for me. It smells kind of artificial to me. It smells kind of... Um, like there's a lot of tonic and not a lot of lavender. I could probably play with this one more and blend it, but why really would I when I have fragrances like Mayfield and like White Sage and Lavender and like Flaming Candles, um, Lemon Lavender and their Lavender Vanilla, why would I play with this when I have fragrances like that already? Um, because there's something that's kind of artificial about this and and it just strikes me as um, 
a want-to-be-upscale fragrance that falls short of the line and you can come at me if you like this fragrance. Um, I would love to hear why you like it and how you make this fragrance work because I am still mildly intrigued with this fragrance. And the last fail um, is actually, I think, a pretty well-reviewed Candle Science scent. So I may also have some people um, not the happiest with me for putting this on my fails list, but this is a personal fail to me and I just can't um, be untrue to myself about calling this a fail. Um, this is Day at the Spa by Candle Science. This is, um, not a very nice spa. Um, yeah, so I guess I get something that's sort of like a bowl of Fruit Loops combined with some sassafras and maybe a little bit of Tahitian vanilla. Um, no, no, no. Maybe a little bit of cheap, um, Briar's vanilla or something. Some non-artisan gelato ice cream vanilla. Um, maybe with some artificial gummy bear citruses and yeah, this is kind of a bright orange color that's muted down with a little bit of yellow, but it's still like this very, um, unintriguing orange color that definitely for me personally falls short of being a spa quality fragrance. Well, that is all for this video and don't forget to leave me a comment down below if you enjoy and would like to see more of these types of videos. I think I am almost through all the categories that I can possibly think of for my fragrance favorite series. So if you know of any additional categories that you would like for me to make a video on, please let me know and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell um, so that you don't miss any updates from me. I hope that you have an absolutely beautiful week. I am sending everyone peace, love, and light, and I'm wishing you happy candle making.